Vegeta Yokai. Do you know where it lives? Great Vegeta Yokai? What's that? Huh? You've never heard of it? It's a sneaky monster that goes around playing tricks on people. It's got magic powers and can even shape shift into anything it wants. One time, the great Mugina Yokai stole some rice from our house. And this other time, it pushed my dad into the river. Sounds like a very naughty little monster. Because we finally found out how to chase it away. My dad said that the great Mugina Yokai likes to play tricks on people who stay out all the time and don't come home when they're supposed to. So all we need to do is chase it away. Then we can come out and play whenever we want. This monster sounds scary, though. Aren't you guys afraid? Surely your parents must be worried about you. Oh, not really. I told my dad that I was gonna find the great Mujina Yokai with some friends, and he didn't even say anything. So we think it must be weak right now. It's probably hiding away so it can rest. Yeah, so as long as we get home before it gets its strength back, we'll be safe. Something sounds very strange about all this. Yeah, Paimon feels like the great Mujina Yokai is one of those storybook monsters that doesn't exist in the real world. We should tell them so they don't waste all their time looking for it. Oh, children, listen up. There's no need to go looking for the great Mujina Yokai, alright? Because it isn't real. Huh? No way. That's impossible. My dad wouldn't lie to me. Your folks are just worried about you is all. They don't want you wandering too far from home because it's too dangerous. That's not true. The great Mujina Yokai is definitely real. Yeah! Yoimiya is even making some weapons for us. And then she's gonna show us how to blow it up. Yoimiya, huh? Wait, as in fireworks prison break, Yoimiya? We told her all about the great Mujina Yokai. She said we shouldn't be scared of it, we should learn how to chase it away instead. We've been waiting for ages now. And finally, Yoimiya said that today's the day! Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yoimiya plays with us and tells us stories all the time. She wouldn't tell a lie. But... but... <sighs> Come on, let's get out of here and go find Yoimiya. Wait, hold on, don't go! <sighs> they didn't seem to take that very well. But Paimon was only trying to look out for them. Who knows what Yoimiya's got to do with this? Let's follow the kids and see what's going on. Down. He was only joking back there. How about the great Mujina Yokai not exist, huh? But we've never seen it for ourselves. That's because the great Mujina Yokai is extra powerful. And that's exactly why I need your help, isn't it? Um. It's okay. Don't be discouraged. Hey, remember if you want to be a hero, you gotta have patience. And wisdom, too. Even if you can't find it right now, it'll definitely show up before the fireworks show starts. So, remember to come and pick up your weapons from me before then, okay? No matter how powerful the great Mujina Yokai might be, it's no match for my specially made fireworks. Just light them up and you'll scare it off no problem. It's up to you guys to protect your homes, your crops, and your folks. Got it! Thanks, Miss Yoimiya! We'll try and be more patient! Oh, yeah, hold up a sec. I have a few slips of paper for you guys, one each. Remember to give it to your parents and tell them to keep it safe. Just tell them it's from Yoimiya. They'll know what it's about. Okay, thank you, Yoimiya. We're gonna go back now. Oh, thanks, Yoimiya. Come play with us soon. Sure thing, we will do. Take care on the way back, and I'll see you later. Uh... Ah, so it was you guys. I guessed as much from the way the kids described you. No worries, though. I'm not blaming you. The great Mujina Yokai is pretty popular with the kids, so of course they're gonna get upset if someone tries to tell them it doesn't exist. Okay, 
But it definitely doesn't exist. Right? Yeah. The first time I heard about it, I knew straight away that it was probably something the parents had come up with to stop the kids from running off all the time. But when the kids asked me about it, I didn't want to break it to them. I just told them that it looks cute, it likes to play pranks, and doesn't hurt people. So, uh, I guess now the kids' impression of the great Mujina Yokai is mostly influenced by me. <sighs> so in a way, this monster is all a product of your creativity? Maybe so. In any case, I'm not gonna be the one who exposes it. Sure, it's likely that the parents just wanted to stop the kids from staying out all the time. But they could have easily had other reasons, too. If I just go ahead and tell them that the great Mujina Yokai doesn't exist without knowing the full story, then who knows? I might be doing more harm than good. Besides, they're just kids. They should be allowed to believe it if it makes them happy. That's more important to them than questioning what's real and what isn't. Heck, I entertain my fair share of fantasies, too. The fire diamond that spins around and shoots out lights that are all the colors of the rainbow? Or the mist spirits that live far off in the mountains and guide you to fairyland if you can find them? I know that they don't really exist, but I still enjoy believing in them. If someone came up to me and started telling me to stop being so stupid, they don't exist, no, no, no. I'd give them the evil eyes and tell them to get the heck out of my face because uh, it's just so annoying. Right? So what if it's made up? It's also really awesome and kind of magical. So it's not up to anyone else to tell me what's what. The things we believed and the experiences we had when we were young turn into our priceless treasures as we grow up. When you were kids, surely you guys believed in things like heroes who slew dragons and sacred swords that cut through darkness. It's the same thing. If we tear apart these kids' fairy tales now, what else do we have to tell them? That Inazuma's locked down? All the grim tales of the Vision Hunt decree? I think it's a bit too early for all of that. I... yeah! Oh, way too early, for sure! <laughs> Whether you understood me or not, don't you worry. I'll take care of the kids and make sure they stay safe. Okay, it's about time I headed back. The Nagnohara fireworks show is just around the corner, and there's still a lot of things to get ready. Nagnohara fireworks show? Is that hosted by your family or something? Well, yeah. I mean, that's why your name is on the event. It's well known throughout Inazuma. Oh, on the subject, are you busy these days? If not, then you should totally come along. I'll prepare an extra pretty firework just for you. <laughs> In that case, come with me to Naginahara. We'll go see my boss. There's still a few fireworks to finish off before the show. Inazuma is home to the Yai Publishing House. In the a lot of them have bad endings, though. Like, the fire diamond will get put in a rich person's gallery where it will never be ignited again! Or, someone will see the Miss Spirit, and not manage to catch it, but because they angered it, they'll never show itself again. The hero who slays the dragon, becomes the next dragon. The sacred sword that once fought the darkness, now becomes a doomsday weapon. <sighs> I know these kinds of stories are all the rage nowadays. Hey Pops, I'm back! The fireworks show is almost upon us, and the fireworks for each family are almost ready. Oh, new faces? Who are these two? Friends or customers? A bit of both, actually. They arrived in Inazuma just recently. Can't let them miss out on a fire show after coming all this way, can we? <laughs> well, either way, come on in and have a seat. And I, Naganahara Rienosuke, will tell you all about the long history of the Naganaharas. I can wait. Pops, I need to ask you about something. <sighs> A long, long time ago. Uh, Pops is 
Are you telling us stories again? Sorry about this, uh, ever since Pops had his accident, his ears don't work too well. Really? But for a moment there, it almost seemed like you were having a coherent conversation. Much, much later. People eventually realize that if you grind certain materials into dust, they burn with many beautiful colors. Pops, Pops, wait! Huh? What? What's that? Did they deliver those firework materials that we ordered yet? Oh! Yesterday's fireworks have all been delivered. So have the ones from the day before yesterday. And the ones from the day before that. No, Pops, I meant the materials. The materials that we ordered. They should have arrived today. Ah! Oh. Today's fireworks are almost ready, too. Don't you worry. <laughs> Your old man's skills are still as sharp as ever. No, Pops, the materials. The raw materials for making fireworks. Sorry? Materials! Oh, oh, the materials! Yes, yes, the materials! Sorry, sorry, Hyman got all excited because you finally got the message across. <laughs> the materials aren't here yet. The couriers did come over to explain why, but, well, I think they did, but I couldn't quite hear what they were saying. No worries. As long as we know, that's fine. We can just make them later. Uh, uh, don't forget to take the goods in when they deliver them, okay, Pops? Of course. Leave it to me! Oh, sorry if we were a little loud. It's always the way, though. It's like that every time I need to ask Pop something. Uh-huh, that's my Pops. He is a good person, all right. Everyone around here respects him. Because my Pops is deaf, he never argues with anyone and never contradicts them. He just listens cheerfully. When I was little, I thought it was because he really understood me and agreed with whatever I had to say. So, I told my Pops everything. Eventually, I realized that the reason he was like that was that he's deaf. But I still tell him stories every day. Huh? Why would you do that? It just makes me happy to see him smile. And it keeps him from being lonely, right? Anyway, more importantly right now, the fireworks show is right around the corner and the materials still haven't arrived. We need to think of an alternative. You and Mia? Is that you? Ah! I thought I told you to be more careful before you speak. S sorry Hold on, I'm coming over. No one's looking. Okay, you can come out now. Uh, come around the side. <sighs> We're lucky that no one from the Tenryo Commission was around. Otherwise, we'd all be in big trouble. Sorry, I guess I was a little rash. But when I heard you come back, I just... Don't worry, Sakajiro. So far, at least, everything is going according to plan. We're going to look for firework materials shortly. While we're out, we'll sort out the boat situation for you, as promised. Thank you for all your help. He's one of our old customers. He came back to Inazuma from the outside world not long ago. While he was smuggling himself in, the Tenryo Commission found him and put out a warrant for his arrest. An arrest warrant? Uh, shh, keep it down. We don't want to draw any unwanted attention. If Sakajiro was caught, there's no knowing what crimes they could charge him with. All we can do is find him a boat and send him out of Inazuma again. Yeah, we know it's going to be dangerous, but there aren't many other options left. What if the boat capsizes? <sighs> Drowning is really scary. If things are this bad, couldn't you just not come back in the first place? Well... There's something I felt I had to do. But as soon as I got back, I started hearing about all these unbelievable changes. I had made my mind up originally, but now I'm not sure anymore. I didn't want to cause any trouble for Yoimiya or Mr. Ryunosuke, but I'm very grateful to them for taking me in. Hey, no worries. You're more than welcome. Remember what I said? As long as you've got that little piece of paper, you'll always be a valued customer of the Naganoharas. Little piece of paper? Yep, the same paper slips as the one I gave to the kids earlier. 
Whenever a customer orders fireworks for a commemorative event, we always include a little paper slip with the goods. Only people from inside my family can understand what's written on it. It's the recipe for the fireworks they ordered. If someone shows a Nagano Hara that paper slip, we guarantee we can make the exact same firework as the original one they purchased. Whether it's- Whoa! That is so awesome! It's a family tradition. All our regular customers know about this. The slip I have is from back when my parents ordered fireworks from Mr. Ryunosuke. Now that I think about it, it must be nearly 20 years ago. <sighs> Who would have thought that things would turn out the way they have? It'll be fine. Escaping in a boat is just the last resort for if there's no other way. Also, try and come up with a different solution. Because it'd be much better if you could stay in Inazuma. Whatever the reasons might be, if our customers come to us looking for help, we're not about to leave them high and dry. Thank you. This way, I still have some time to consider my options. Alright. Well, let's not stay out here in the open for too long. Hurry up and get back inside. I'll let you know as soon as I have an update for you. Alright. I'll, I'll leave it to you then, I guess. <sighs> it's a shame. They still wouldn't give him a permit, even though he was born and raised in Inazuma. Speaking of... You guys only got here recently. How did you manage to get a permit? Even then, we only got through thanks to some help from Miss Haragi Chisato of the Kanjo Commission. Oh, I see. So you had Big Shots helping you. I guess that won't be of much help to Sakujiro. Uh, I just wish the commissions could be a little bit more flexible. I bet nowhere else you've been is quite like Inazuma, huh? Uh, well, no matter what, I have to find a way to help him. I'm sorry. I invited you to come watch the fireworks, but now I have to run a few errands. You don't have to join me if you don't want to. I can go sort out the firework materials in the boat by myself. And then you can come meet me back at the house later. Oh, cool! Then let's start with Sakajiro's boat. We can chat along the way. Oh yeah! Um, if it's fine with you, can I ask how you two first met? He saved me from drowning this one time, and after that, we started traveling together. Why do you ask? Nothing. I'm just quite envious of your relationship. If my pops had a person like you around, his being deaf wouldn't hold things up all the time. Excited? Because, because you said person and not floating child or a mascot. Koichi, I'm here. How is the boat coming along? Yeah, it's uh, all right, I guess. Um, I w was questioned though. Wait. Wait, should we really be talking about this in front of them? Oh, don't worry. They're my friends. You can trust them. They came with me to- Yeah! You could say we're all in the same boat here! Oh, I see. Sorry. I didn't mean to doubt you. I'm just being cautious. The boat is ready, but I'll have to be discreet moving it here. Huh? Why is that? Because of the Sokoku Decree. The Tenryo Commission is really suspicious of any kind of seaborne vessel. Even the smallest ones, they'll stop and interrogate us, demanding to know what we plan on doing with it. It's a real nuisance. I understand. I'm sorry for dragging you into this mess. <laughs> uh, don't be silly. Uh, I'm actually happy you came to me for help. I've always come to you for fireworks, and again this time. So just consider this my way of saying thank you. Right. I'll go fetch the boat now. I should be back shortly. Thank you. Oh, if it's on the way, you can always pick up your fireworks from my house. Everything was made in strict accordance with what was on the paper slip. You won't find the slightest thing wrong with them. All right, then. The fireworks show will be starting soon, won't it? You should make sure your new friends get to see it. It's an Inazuma tradition, after all. Yep, that's the plan. Oh, you know what? You should tell them about your past. About the first time you ordered fireworks for my family. 
That's a long story, actually. Where do I start? Uh, oh, maybe I'll come back to that after moving the boat here. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, got caught up in the conversation there. Okay, well, I'll leave you to it for now and meet you back here later. <laughs> Lucky you reminded me. Otherwise, I would have ended up chatting the rest of the day away. Ugh, I've been so busy with the fireworks business these past few days that I haven't had a moment to stop and chat with anyone. Ugh, it's killing me. Of course, Pops is happy to listen to me chatter away, but because he can hardly hear anything, it's difficult to get an interesting reaction from him. And I'm doing it again, aren't I? Ugh. What I meant to say was, while Kalichi is bringing the boat here, we should try to find some firework materials. I need to make fireworks not just for you guys, but for those kids and Sakajiro as well. We're missing a lot of materials. It'll be fine. It's actually like this every year. There's always a bunch of extra orders to slot in here and there. When people want fireworks, it's always because they have something to commemorate. And if they miss the chance, they might never get another one. So, no matter how busy I am, I'm always happy to take their orders. So, what you're trying to say is that you enjoy the work? Oh, I do! I really do! Being born into a family of fireworks makers, I feel like since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with watching things go boom! And then seeing all the lights and colors and... Uh, uh, what I really wanted to say was, uh, don't worry about me. It'll all be fine. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's just that good conversation can be as fleeting as fireworks sometimes, you know? So, when I'm in the mood and I've got a lot to say, I just have to get all out there in one go and leave no regrets. Let's head to the city. I think I'll try my luck with some people that I know. Question! Doesn't it hurt your voice talking all the time? It can get uncomfortable, I guess. But what else would I be using my voice for? Morihiko, how's business these days? <laughs> Yoi Mia, there you are. I thought you might show up. Ha, no need to beat around the bush. You're here for the fireworks materials, I assume. I put a batch aside just for you. It'll definitely be enough. Huh? Really? How'd you know? Because a fireworks show is coming up. And that usually means you'll be running all over the place trying to get your hands on some last-minute materials. I've come to expect it now. There's always a few extras unaccounted for, eh? I'm oh, so sorry for bothering you every time. Ah, oh, come on now. You know I didn't mean it like that. I'd sooner have my business go under than turn down one of your requests. What about you two? Are you the ones needing some fireworks made? <laughs> it's no trouble at all, my friend. <sighs> Once when I had an argument with my son, Yoimiya was the one who came and calmed him down. I'm hopeless at communicating with him. If it wasn't for Yoimiya, who knows, he probably would have run away by now. Nah, he was never gonna come to that. He's a sensitive kid and he cares a lot about your feelings. It's just, he doesn't know how to express it. Maybe if you turn that frown upside down once in a while, he might feel more at ease. Yeah, I guess I'm probably too serious around him. Which is strange, because I don't think I'm anything like that when I'm talking with other people. Don't worry about it. No one's perfect. If you have any more trouble in the future, just come to me. Even if it's not fireworks related, I'll happily oblige. Customers come first. Always. <laughs> All right, then. Everyone's always saying what a good kid you are. Your father must be very proud of you. Go ahead and take the ore, by the way. It's on the house. Oh, no, you don't. That's out of the question. Don't worry. Just take it as a token of my gratitude. Gratitude won't pay your bills, though. Don't do this to me. Can't we just play by normal business rules here? I already said it's fine. Please, just take it. Surely you've got a load of other things you need to get done today. Um, well, how about this then? I'll record this in my notebook, and we can consider it a down payment against any fireworks you want to purchase in the future. <sighs> There's no convincing you, is there? All right, then. 
If you insist, pass on my regards to your dad. Tell him Morihiko wishes him health and happiness. Will do. You look after yourself as well. Don't push yourself too hard. You don't want to make yourself ill again. Everyone seems to really like you, Yunia. You're not the first person to say that. In fact, some people think I'll literally do any favor they ask me to. When that happens, I say to them, Hey, this is a fireworks store. We do, but... Ugh, they don't always listen. So, it can't be helped. But also, it's not really a big deal. Anyway, we've got all the materials we need now, so that solves that problem. Next, we just need to go find someone to process them. Hajime! Mr. Aminoma, it's me! Ah, Yoimiya. If I'm not mistaken, you must be here for some firework materials. Seems like everyone knows how busy your Mia gets leading up to the fireworks show. I'm very sorry. Would you be able to wait for a while? I have quite a backlog of weapons orders right now. No worry. Oh, oh wait. Actually, uh, yeah, that could be a problem. Uh, some worries. How about this? Do you need a hand? As long as we can get through your orders, you can help me process my ore, right? Uh... That will depend on my master. Oh, you don't mind, do you, Mr. Aminoma? As you know, it's not long now until the Naginohara fireworks show starts. There's still a lot of fireworks left to make, if I don't finish them on time. Talkative as ever, I see, dear child. The essence of Aminoma art is patience and focus. When the mind is disturbed, it will show in the blade that is forged. If you badger Hajime like this, you will only succeed in disrupting his concentration. But, but this is a special circumstance, surely! The Naginohara fireworks show is right around the corner! So give me your ore, and I will process it for you. Huh? Master, you mean you'll do the work personally? Is that so surprising? It is, after all, the only option. Thank you for helping out, Mr. Aminoma! You're quite welcome. The Naga Nohara fireworks show is an important event. This, I know well. In addition to this, I am indebted to Ryunosuke for all the business he has given me. But Yoimiya, you should plan things more carefully in the future. Do not rush everything at the last minute. <laughs> I'll try my best. In the future, I'll get some extra materials in to cover any unexpected changes of plan late in the day. <sighs> Though for you, dear child, no matter how much you prepare in advance, it may never be enough. Excuse me, I will be back shortly. Wow, Mr. Aminoma! Just look at the shape and size of these grains! It's beautiful! I'm at a loss for words. It's been a while since I've seen you take up your tools, but it looks like your craft hasn't degraded one bit. Of course. I have studied these techniques my whole life. They are impossible for me to forget. So have Amenaba Art and Naginohara Fireworks been working together for a long time already? Back in the day, it was my master and Ryunosuke's father. The people may have changed from one generation to another, but the ingredients required to make fireworks have remained the same. Hajime, in the future, this will be up to you. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, I won't bother you guys any longer. Oh, remember to come and watch the fireworks. Okay, time to head off. Kuchi probably isn't back just yet, but let's go wait for him. Back yet, but not 
to worry, because actually, I've been hoping for a chance to have a nice long chat with you all day. Sorry for dragging you with me everywhere. Everyone's been so good to me, though. It's all going really smoothly. <laughs> <sighs> Feels like Paimon has barely spoken a word this whole trip. I felt like I was neglecting you guys, so I wanted to find an opportunity to catch up. When we first met, I was in a hurry. We didn't have a chance to sit down and have a proper chat. You guys are travelers, right? So, where else did you go before coming to Inazuma? Oh, sounds great! I heard they pretty much have no rules over there, right? So people are free to live their life however they want, doing whatever makes them happy. My pops actually received a gift from one of his old customers over there. It was from the winery or something. Don Winery! Their dandelion wine is super famous! Yes, that's the one! I remember when he drank it. <laughs> I've never seen him enjoy a bottle of wine so much in his life. He was telling me all night about how good it tasted. My friend once said to me that only people with a strong will and a clear purpose decide to go traveling. Maybe it's to see a certain view or to fulfill a certain wish. So, what made you guys embark on your treacherous journey to Inazuma? And to find a lost family member, too. You were separated from your family because of a god? Oh, that must be really tough. I get it. Well, if that's how it is, then that's how it is. <sighs> You know, I was going to ask if you guys wanted to stay here in Inazuma. Unlike the outside world, what Inazuma seeks is eternity. In other words, a state of tranquility where very little ever changes. The advantage of that is that if you're ever tired from your journey, Inazuma's a great place to come and rest. Um, uh, let me put it this way. I was just worried that you might be getting weary. If you keep pressing on in that state, you might start to lose sight of the things that made you want to start your journey in the first place. <sighs> Sometimes. That's also just how it is. When you're exhausted, everything becomes an uphill struggle. Even trying to have fun. You won't be able to enjoy yourself if you're too tired. An adventure friend of mine once told me that if you're too focused on reaching the end of the race... Well, don't worry though. I'm sure I can think of some way to get you feeling relaxed and happy. And you're here now. So even if you're gonna leave eventually, I wanna make sure you at least leave with fond memories. Who knows? Once you're reunited with your family, maybe you'll find Inazuma the right kind of place to call home. <laughs> I already have an idea of the color and type of fireworks I want to give you guys. I'll keep it a secret for now, though. Yoimiya, I'm back. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Let's head over to the boat. Or, uh, did you want to keep chatting a little longer? Okay, good. Let's go, then. Just act naturally, though. We don't want to raise any suspicion. It must be super sturdy, right? Absolutely. Rest assured that the quality is guaranteed. be helped, I'm afraid. This is the biggest and sturdiest boat that I can provide. It's built from the finest Inazuman timber. Still, I'll be the first to admit that if he's planning to ride this into the storm, it's going to be exceedingly dangerous. I'm also hoping Sakajiro won't have to use it. It's just there as a last resort. I gotta say though, Koichi, it feels like your craft has improved once again. <laughs> I'm not the one you should be praising. It's all thanks to the guys who kindly pitched in. To avoid detection, we each worked on our own materials separately, then assembled them secretly in the night. This is the largest we could afford to build. Any bigger, and there's no way it would pass the Tenryo Commission's inspection. Let's store the boat here for now, then. I'll fill Sakajiro in when I get back. He'll need to make some preparations before setting sail. Maybe it does, but I knew what I was getting into from the moment I agreed to help him. My family has pretty good connections with the Yashiro Commission. We work very closely with them. 
And whenever there's a national event of any sort, the other two commissions come to us too. As long as they're polite and respectful and don't cause a fuss, they won't look to cause trouble for me either. And anyway, to your point about collaboration, you've been helping out too, right? That's true. This was all a collaborative effort. Wait! Oh, oh, oh no! Ah, so you're seasoned crooks already, eh? Don't know what I was worried about then. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for everything, Koichi. And your fireworks are ready, so just go pick them up from my house whenever you want. While you're there, you can get my pops to settle the boat construction fees. Oh, don't worry about paying anything. Third Sis would be sure to scold me if she found out I'd taken Mora from the Naganoharas. Who's Third Sis? Oh, uh, let me explain this one. It's a story my pops told me. There used to be a thriving merchant guild in Inazuma. It got really prosperous. At one point, there were a dozen or so kids born around the same time to the families of the guild. They all grew up together, each of them learning their respective family's business. They were a tightly knit group of friends. But eventually, they all grew up and decided they each wanted to go into business themselves. It was inevitable that business would send them all to different corners of the world, and that they'd have far less opportunity to see each other in the future. That's right. Just before we went our separate ways, the eldest of the group suggested that we should all go watch some fireworks together one last time. <laughs> they were all very ambitious types, and each had their own knack for doing business. One by one, they left, until Koichi was the only one of them remaining in Inazuma. After that, he hardly saw them. But, whenever one of them did come back to visit, fireworks would always be involved. Yeah, no matter how close you and your friends are, there's always gonna be s some distance after being separated for a long time. But as soon as the fireworks lit up the sky, it'd instantly take us right back to our childhood, and we'd be chatting away like in the old days. To us, those memories are eternal. Oh, so this is what you meant when you were talking about commemorating things. Yep. That's exactly right. That's why I can't let people down when they're counting on me for their fireworks. Anyway, I need to go update Sakujiro. See you, Koichi. Thanks again for your help. Yeah, I should get out of here, too. I don't want to get caught red-handed. Okay, story time. So, whenever Koichi brings one of his friends from the Trade Association to see me, But there are so many of them in that friendship group, and I don't remember anything from that age anyway, so I uh, never have a clue who they are. One time, he shows up with another one of his friends, and the friend asks me if I remembered him. So I'm like, yes, I do! You helped me once when I was just a baby! Koichi just bursts out laughing and says, actually, this is one of his carpenter friends. The boat is already and waiting. I'll mark the location for you on the map. Be uh, after how much effort it took to get back in, it's hard to convince myself to leave again. Especially when I'll be going up against the stormy ocean on a tiny little boat. My prospects don't look great. Well, they won't look much better if you get caught by the Terrio Commission. I'm afraid that sooner or later they are going to find you here. Time is starting to run out. I'm sorry. I'll make sure to get out of here before they come. I promise I won't cause you and your family any more trouble. I didn't mean it like that. If we ever ran into any problems, I'm sure I'd figure something out. But if the Tenryo Commission does catch up to you, they make a run for the boat. Okay. I won't let them catch me. But... <sighs> no, I guess this whole trip was a waste in the end. Why did you want to come back to Inazuma anyway? Is there something you wanted to do? I didn't used to like this place at all. That's why I left. But looking back on things now... I was really just running away from my responsibilities. Once I started to realize that, I got restless. I couldn't stop thinking about the people and the things I'd left behind. So I... Ah, forget it. What does it matter now? It's too late anyway. I originally wanted to make up for all my regrets, but instead, I found myself in the situation I'm in now. What a pity. Talk to us about 
If it isn't Yoi Mia, come on in, dear. Come and take a seat. Are these two your friends? Yes, they're travelers from afar. Outsiders have a very difficult time getting into Inazuma nowadays. Indeed, these are unprecedented times. But seeing as they came all this way, we locals should give them a warm welcome. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, before I forget, I brought the fireworks that you ordered. Oh, thank you, dear. Your family is so good to us every year. First your father, and now you. I wonder if I'll still be around to see the next hair of Naganaharo fireworks. Of course you will. You're both in great health. Don't say things like that. It's bad luck. <sighs> we aren't as young as we once were, though. The body knows it. It used to be that I could spend all day working the land, carrying water back and forth. But now, even a moment of light work leaves me with all sorts of aches and pains. I wanted to do some weeding yesterday, but as soon as I bent down to get started, I suddenly felt that if I went any further, I wouldn't be able to get back up again. No worries. Say no more. We'll handle it. No, no, no. We can't be putting you to work when you're a guest in our home. I'll just go fetch the tea and some snacks, and then we'll continue our conversation. It's fine. It's not like it's the first time I've helped you with chores. I just haven't had much time recently with the fireworks show coming up. But once that's out of the way, I'll be sure to come by more often. It's no trouble, really. We don't mind helping. Oh, you're such good kids. As for mine, he's all grown up now. Hasn't found anyone yet. And he doesn't visit very often. Uh, if you're quite sure it's no trouble, then... I have some pickled radish here. Would you mind delivering it to Satoru on the other side of the village? Sure. It won't take us a moment. The old folks aren't very mobile, so come on, let's help them out. We'll get rid of the weeds first, and then deliver the pickled radish.
got it! And that should just about do it. Satoru is on the other side of the village. Let's go see him now. Hey, Satoru. How have you been? Keeping well? Yeah, same as usual. Not much has changed. You're looking full of life, as always. Well, thanks to the support of our loyal customers, the family business just keeps getting better and better. We sold some fireworks to Liu at a while back, and word is, they were a real hit. So it looks like we'll be getting more business from over there in the future. That must mean a lot more work for you, though. Are you sure you and Mr. Ryunosuke can manage? If it gets too much, I don't forget, you can always ask me for help. Hmm? We should be fine. I think we can cope. Oh, yeah. Um, this is a pickled radish from Mrs. Imatani. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I never used to be a fan of pickled radish, would you believe? But then I'd try some of Mrs. Imatani's homemade stuff and I couldn't get enough of it. It's a family staple now. Speaking of your family, how's everyone doing? They're doing well. We have the occasional heated argument, but I guess that's every family. Yeah, being close to family is better than never getting to see them. Even if it does mean putting up with some conflict. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Imatani seem to have a great relationship. But still, they must get lonely with their child never visiting. Huh, they didn't seem that way to me. I think they're just used to it. You make a good point, though. I should drop by more often in the future. That way, they won't get so bored. Oh, I'm sure they'd love that. As would all of us in Konda Village. You're always welcome here. <laughs> Thank you. Now that we've finished all the chores, it's time to talk to the Imatanis about Sakujiro. That was quick. Ah, young people are so handy. Younger people have bundles of energy, and older people have a wealth of wisdom. Each have their strengths. Speaking of youth, do you know what? It's been 50 years this year. Oh, so it has. Goodness, how the time flies. You barely notice as the years go by, but then suddenly, 50 years have passed. 50 years since what? Some important day? <laughs> well, if you must know, it was 50 years ago, back in the days when this young lady was still trying to win me over, that... Oh, stop trying to impress them. <laughs> We both know you were the one who was hopelessly smitten and desperately trying to win my affection. Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> Fifty years ago, I proposed to my wife at the Naganahara fireworks show. We've been together ever since. Mm, to tell the truth, I was still a little uncertain. I wasn't sure what I was doing when I walked into the Naganahara's shop and ordered my firework. Even as it was rising up into the sky, uh, I still had no clue what I was going to say. But then it exploded, the sky lit up, I looked back at her and saw her eyes twinkling in the light of the firework. Before I knew what was happening, apparently, I'd already said it. And, well, she'd said yes. Fifty years. In some ways, it's a long time. In others, it's no time at all. Really, it's just a number. But fifty years of being together? Now that is something worth commemorating. I had no idea it was your 50th anniversary. If I'd known, I would have made some extra fancy fireworks just for you. Oh no, it's quite alright. We always set off the same firework every year. It wouldn't be the same without it. Seeing that firework go off takes us right back to those days. Even at this age, we still look back with not a single regret. Ah, oh, what a great relationship they have. <laughs> Enough about us, though. Yoimiya, aren't you busy with the fireworks show coming up? Was there something you needed to discuss? Yeah, um, it's a difficult thing to talk about, but here goes. Hmm, Sakujiro. So he came back. Huh? You know him? He was our boy's best friend when they were young. 
They were inseparable. They grew up together, shared everything with each other, and went everywhere together. But one day, they had a terrible argument. Sakujiro seemed to feel that Inazuma was too peaceful, and wanted to see what the outside world was like. But our Keisuke took after his father and mother. He felt that there was nothing wrong at all with being peaceful. You know what children are like. They get terribly worked up about these sorts of things. In the end, Sakujiro stormed off, and that was that. I see. Keisuke said nothing to me or my wife about the fight. We could sense that he was very hurt by it, but he didn't want to talk with us about how he was really feeling. Eventually, whether out of pent-up anger or for some other reason, he joined the Tenryo Commission. He rarely comes home anymore. If it was anything else, I could talk to Keisuke, and I'm sure he'd be willing to help. But since it's Sakujiro, I don't feel there's any way we can get involved. What a strange coincidence! Who'd have thought? I understand now. When I asked Sakujiro why he came back, he just said because of past mistakes and wasn't willing to elaborate. Now I finally understand why he can't decide what to do. Two best buddies in childhood. One grows up to join the Tenryo Commission, the other grows up to join the Tenryo Commission's most wanted list. Well, no worries. If that's the case, then never mind. We can find some other way to help Sakujiro. There's no need to make things difficult for you. This sounds like something for Sakujiro and Keisuke to resolve between themselves. Yes. Oh, it'd be so nice if they could go back to the way things were. I think after all these years, they ought to let go of their grudges. <sighs> well, can't say we didn't try. I'll let Sakujiro know after we get back. <sighs> Yoimiya, something bad's happened. Some people from the Tinryo Commission came by. Huh? Why? Do they know? Pops, are you alright? They didn't do anything to you, did they? I told them the show was starting soon and the place was filled with fireworks, but they didn't listen. It seemed like they knew Sakujiro was inside. Luckily, Sakujiro heard them coming in time and managed to escape through the window. The Tinryo Commission wasn't able to capture him. Oh, this is bad news. I don't think Sakujiro had enough time to make his mind up. Pops, did you see where he went? Oh, the Tenryo Commission will definitely be chasing after him. Good point. Names. We need names. Sunlight showing up like this, surely it must be Keisuke's doing. The Commission wouldn't normally cause this big of a fuss over a stowaway. <sighs> Sorry, my ears are no good. And I didn't get a good look at them either. If you're wondering which way they went, they left the city. I wish I'd caught their names, <sighs> but I didn't hear a thing. As it happens, I did. I was getting some ore from my friend's place and happened to bump into them on the way over. I think their leader's name was Keisuke, just like you said. Just as I thought. Thanks. If Sakujiro still hasn't made up his mind, those two running into each other won't solve anything. And even worse, there'll be no coming back from it for Sakujiro. We can't let that happen. Come with me. Let's track them down. It was Kazaka and his friends. Hi, Yo 
Rhaenia? Are the weapons to scare away the great Lugina yokai ready yet? Oh, uh, Mr. Ryunosuke is making them right now. You can go collect them from my house later. Uh, aren't you gonna play with us, Yornia? I'm sorry. I have something important to do right now. I'll be back later on, but I'll bring you guys some candy next time. The extra sweet candy, the one you guys love. Yeah, hey, we're gonna get candy! Woohoo! Also, I wanted to ask you guys something. Uh, did you see a bunch of scary-looking men come by here at all? Yep. We did. It looked like they were chasing someone. Are they trying to catch a monster too? No, don't worry. It's all just a big misunderstanding. Be good kids and stay out of trouble, all right? Stay in the city for now, and I'll come play with you after the fireworks start. We will. We'll be on our best behavior, especially for you, Yoimiya. It looks like this is the right way. Let's get going. If Sokujiro still hasn't made up his mind, I guess I'll have to step in. Look! There are people from the Tenryu Commission over there! It must be- Sorry, official business. I can't let you pass. Sakujiro and Keisuke are up ahead, right? We need to talk to them about something. Didn't you hear me? You're not getting past. Ugh, what a nuisance! <sighs> well, you've only got yourself to blame! dare you impede the work of the Tenryo Commission? You will be punished for your actions! There is nowhere you can escape justice! Not even at the edges of the world! Huh. Look at that! The one with the loudest mouth had the fastest feet. We can't waste any more time on these guys! Let's push on. They should be just ahead. Your skills with the sword have stagnated, Sakujiro. You should have known that you stood no chance against me in a duel. I never imagined I'd fall into your hands. I... If this is to be my fate, I accept it. I have nothing else to say. But your return says that you finally came around to my point of view. Whatever you say. You will return with me to the Tenryo Commission to await your sentencing. The one who made this boat will also be punished. Wait! It doesn't have to end like this! Don't you have anything else to say to one another? Hey, I know you. You're Naganahara's girl, who makes the fireworks. <laughs> I know you like to get involved in other people's business, but stay out of this. It does not concern you. It's okay, Yoimiya. The past is the past. Why did you risk life and limb to get yourself back into Inazuma? Why were you so reluctant to leave after you got here? I'll tell you why. This is why. This is the chance you've been waiting for. To talk everything through. I have nothing to say to him. He's a criminal. I work for the Tenryo Commission. There is never any room for discussion. Out of respect for the friendship we once had, I gave him a chance to fight for his freedom. But his skills with the sword are as disappointing now as they ever were. What are you talking about? And just who do you think you're kidding? You left all your subordinates back there to guard the road, making sure no one else followed you here. Seems to me like you were hoping for a chance to talk. I can see it in your faces. You both have so much to say. And you're just gonna choose to keep it all inside? Tuh. 
Don't flatter yourself. What would you know? Noemiya, leave it. It was just my wishful thinking. No, I won't leave it! I will not stand by and watch when you haven't even done anything, Keisuke. You seem to like settling things with a duel, so let's do it your way. If I win, then you need to say everything that's in your heart. No more running from your feelings. And the same goes for you, Sakujiro. If I win, you will tell Keisuke exactly why you came back, no matter what the consequences are. You have to tell him everything. If you don't say anything now, you may never have another chance. And if you lose? Then I'll admit to collaborating with Sakujiro, and accept the Tenryo Commission's punishment. Yoimiya. I accept. Let's settle this with a duel. <laughs> Sir, we're here to back you up. Backup? Duels are supposed to be one-on-one! -on -one. All right, that's it! Let's help Yoimiya! We can't let her fight them all alone! you to stay away. Now stand down. Y yes, sir. Sorry. Young lady, you are just as obstinate as Sakujiro was back then. Why were you so convinced that we had things to say to each other? Because Sakujiro may not have told me about you when he came back, but he did order a firework from me. Then your parents told me about what happened between you when you were younger. Once I'd heard the story, I realized that the firework meant something special to you both. And that's why I simply refuse to believe that you have nothing to say to each other. Nobody sets off a firework to feel lonely, do they? Hmm. The reason I came back is that... <sighs> I felt lost. It wasn't that I'd changed my mind, I just felt that what I'd done in the past was to try to escape from reality. I saw the freedom of Mondstadt. The contracts of Liyue, the wisdom of Sumeru, and the justice of Fontaine. It all left a deep impression on me. I was glad that I'd left Inazuma, but then I happened to hear about the Sokoku Decree. I was an escapee, and I was proud of that. What I should have tried to do is take the good things from the outside world and bring them back home. So that's why you came back? Out of your naive hope of changing the way things are here? No, I let go of all those delusions of grandeur. I just felt that... I never should have run away like that. <sighs> After all... You never ran away. Huh? I don't know about you, but life hasn't been easy for me. But I just had to come back and visit. It was like fate was calling me and I couldn't ignore it any longer. Life isn't easy for anyone. I truly worship the Raiden Shogun. Her ideas were my personal creed, and I desired nothing more than to see her will done. But now, my role is to punish violators of this Hakoku decree, and confiscate people's visions. It's not what I signed up for when I joined the Tenryo Commission. I do wonder, am I really doing the right thing? The boat is yours. Uh-huh. I couldn't make you stay in Inazuma, but that doesn't mean I want to keep you here by force. Uh, what will you say to the higher-ups? Don't worry about that. I'll handle it. If you want to come back, I hear the process of returning to Inazuma from the outside world is long and complicated. But it can be done. I will lend you my help, but until then, you'll have to wait. And don't kick the bucket on the way out. Don't worry, Keisuke. Any chance we can watch the fireworks together? Maybe next time. <sighs> I'll be demoted for sure. It's not like me to give in to childish sentiment like this. I can't explain why I went through with it. It's the one that Sakujiro planned on using for his escape. Ayasu Shitaka and the others to transport it here. 
citing the temporary contraband storage clause. Forcing Sakujiro to this spot was also something I had planned all along. It's just like you said, Yoimiya. Even though I hadn't fully made up my mind, my actions betrayed my intent. But I think you did the right thing. And look, now you've managed to resolve the grievance in your heart by talking about it. I understand now. Thank you. I didn't know you were quite so perceptive. You saw right into what I was thinking. <laughs> That's only because I know your parents so well. They're both really nice people, so I didn't think the apple would fall too far from the tree. I had heard there was a new Naganohara running things these days. A little loud and reckless, maybe, but <laughs> you live up to the family name. By the way, Naganohara fireworks can reproduce the firework that the two of us set off back then, right? Would you be able to make one for me? Sorry, no can do. Without the slipper reference, I can't make the same one again. And I'm afraid Sakajiro is the one with the slip. Ah, I see. Never mind then. <laughs> Don't get too down just yet, though. I mentioned that Sakajiro ordered a firework from me, didn't I? I can't make another one, but I'm guessing Sakajiro probably won't be needing his anymore. It'd be a shame for it to go to waste, so I'll make an exception and let you set it off instead. Thank you very much. No worries. And don't miss out on the start of the fireworks show. Yoimiya! The way you took command of that whole situation was amazing! What can I say? I like to talk. I'm a strong believer in the power of words. If you're not willing to communicate, then the problem just sits there. If you just keep staring at it without doing anything, eventually you'll watch every last opportunity to resolve it slip away before your eyes. Sakujiro and Keisuke can turn back the clock in their relationship, but that's no reason to live with remorse. Anyway, follow me. I'll bring you to the perfect place to watch the fireworks. My pops will set off the firework that I wanted to give to you. It's... Kisuke... <laughs> I can weep. Uh, I didn't actually cry though, right? I just feel a bit misty eyed. Oh, uh, remember that big one that went up first? The gold one? That's the one I had Pops make for you. Oh, Paimon saw it! It was one of the best ones! They won't forget that anytime soon! <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear! I was hoping it would leave a deep impression on you guys. No matter where your journey takes you, and no matter what hardships might lie ahead, I hope you'll always be able to look back fondly on the fireworks you saw tonight. I believe that as time goes by, this firework will only grow brighter and more beautiful in your heart. Oh, and also, you're technically my customers now. Here, this is your paper slip. If you ever want- You know, Yoimiya, you seem to turn 
into a completely different person during the fireworks. You were so quiet, and it was like you couldn't hear anything at all. Oh, I can hear you. I just have a habit of being silent while I'm watching fireworks. Quietly watching something you made with your own hands rise into the sky feels like a sacred ceremony to me. You asked me what fireworks mean to me, right? Yep. Well, for Koichi, who built the boat for us, and his friend, Third Sis, fireworks commemorate friendship. For Keisuke's parents, they commemorate marriage. And for Keisuke and Sakajiro, they were commemorating... Hmm. Oh yeah, right, beliefs! As for me, uh... <laughs> To be honest, uh, even though I've thought about it countless times before, I still haven't found an answer. Seriously? Huh. Paimon was expecting something deep and philosophical. Well, no one's ever asked me this before, so I've never really settled on an answer. It was by chance that I happened to be born into the Naganohara family, so it was by chance that I ended up learning this craft for my pops. It's also by chance that I've met so many people, learned so many things, and discovered that people associate watching fireworks with the things that are most precious to them. Fireworks that disappear in a flash of light are probably the furthest thing away from the eternity that our Shogun desires. But people's feelings don't just disappear. And it's those feelings that give fireworks their purpose. If nobody wanted to watch fireworks, then they wouldn't exist. Also, consider this. You have to have the Naganoharas because so many people are emotionally invested in the existence of fireworks. If we didn't exist, their wishes would go unfulfilled, wouldn't they? You know, I don't really think about complicated things like this very often. But I'm proud that I was born into the Naganohara family and have a chance to make so many pretty fireworks.